Hello and welcome to a Word for This Day podcast. I'm Jory Schaefer, the show's host and creator, and it is my joy and pleasure to welcome you today. Welcome to anyone who's found us for the first time. It's no accident that you are here today, friend. So please don't run off quite yet. Please stick around for a bit. Let's see what the Lord has for all of us today. And welcome back to you regular listeners. I am so thankful that you choose to come back day after day such a joy to be on this journey with you and so i thank you for listening i would encourage you please wherever you listen if you listen on youtube please subscribe to the channel if you listen on your uh, daily podcast app please consider following subscribing and maybe leaving a comment or a review and i may not see those but what that does if this is a blessing to you is it's it makes it more um, visible for other people to see. The more people that that like and subscribe and follow, the more that those different platforms put put it in front of people as an option to listen. And so um, I have no doubt, it, because I know he's done it this whole way, that God puts it exactly where he wants it to be. But this could be your way of helping to share more about uh the truth that is in God's word. If, and so if you feel so led, please consider doing that. It's not to share me, but it's to share uh, this platform for us to talk about God's word being truth. And oh, friends, I tell you this frequently, our world needs truth. Our world lies in the power of the evil one who is a deceiver. He's an adversary. He's a murderer. He's a liar. And uh, the Bible tells us that that is how Satan is. And we uh, want to share this good news of the truth, the good news that even though we are all sinners and even though we uh, had a default destination uh, that would keep us separated from God, he made a way for us to be able to have relationship with him. And he did that through his son, Jesus. And so we have the best news ever. So may we share that. May you share it as you spend time, spending more time in his word and and filling your heart with that May that just uh, flow from you, this good news that we have in Jesus. Friends, our world is hurting. Um, It is deceived. It is walking in darkness. And we have the answer. So may we share it in whatever way the Lord directs us to do that. Please know that I love to hear from you. So if you feel so led, please send me a message sometime. And please know that I pray for you frequently, that the Lord would draw you closer to him and give you more of a desire to know him and his word, and that you'll be intentional about spending time with him. Well, our verse for the day for June the 15th, 2024, comes from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. We were just there. Uh, Let's see, which day was that? Just three days ago. And uh, we're at the end of this letter to the Ephesians, but our verse for the day for uh, June the 15th, 2024 is from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 15, and it reads as follows from the Legacy Standard Bible. And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now, we are, our verse is in the middle of a thought. And so we, with God's help, are going to go back. We are going to get the context. We're going to see what was going on here. What was Paul talking about? To whom was he talking? And what was the purpose of this? And oh, friends, I think you'll see it is just such a blessing when we look at this. You know, if you've been on this journey with me for very long, that I think it is a good discipline for us to think about where we are in the scripture. What book or letter are we, are we in? Who may have written it? Why did he write it? And uh, so we know that we are in this letter to the Ephesians, and I mentioned that we were there about three days ago, and this is one of Paul's letters. Remember that the New Testament begins with the four Gospels. It moves into um, early church history. Then it moves into Paul's letters. There's 13 of those. And then into the general letters, which were letters written by men who are not Paul. And then 
um, into that book of New Testament prophecy, which is the book of Revelation. Now, one thing I want to remind you of, and we don't talk about this frequently, but uh, Paul wrote this letter to the believers at Ephesus, and then it was about probably, we think, 30 years or so later that this same group of believers had a letter written to them by the Apostle John, John the Gospel writer, John the Revelator, and it was directed to to him uh, to write this by the Lord Jesus. And we read about that in um, Revelation chapter 2, when he would, they received that first letter uh, that John was told to write down, and um, they were commended for their their good works and what they stood for, but they had forsaken their first love, and so uh, that let that be a um, a warning and a reminder to us. We can do all the things, but if we're not doing it with the right heart and not keeping uh, God first and Jesus first um, in all things and not walking according to the Spirit, we have that um, the danger of getting off track. And so, uh, but that came later, but I just wanted to remind you about that. You could go back and read that later at some other point. Uh, but we see here that uh, Paul wrote this. With, the reason that we know he wrote it is because he opens the letter this way. He says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God to the saints who are at Ephesus and who are faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Paul tells us that he was appointed an apostle and it was by God's will. And as we talk about just about every time that we're in one of Paul's letters, he was not always walking according to God's will. Um, During the time that uh, he was uh, rising up, so to speak, in the ranks of the uh, Jewish Pharisees, system. He was a very religious Jew, and he was um, advancing among his peers. We read him say he thought that this Christianity uh, was blasphemous. He did not realize that Jesus was the Messiah, the true Messiah that they'd been looking for, and he was um, on a mission to stamp out those believers and to stop this movement. But Jesus graciously met him on the Damascus Road, and you can read about that in Acts chapters 9, 22, and 26, where we see the account of Paul's conversion. And after he believed that Jesus truly was the Messiah and had uh, died for him and had been resurrected. He went away to Arabia for a while, and then he came back and started on his missionary journeys, and it was on one of these that he uh, first went to Ephesus. And uh, we read that after he left Corinth, uh, he went to Ephesus with Priscilla and Aquila, some of his co-laborers, and he left them there and went away, but then he came back. And so he spent a total of about three years with the believers at Ephesus, so he knew them very well. And um, he wrote this letter to them from prison. He wanted to encourage them and remind them. So this letter to the Ephesians um Let's see, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon are known as the prison epistles. It was thought that he wrote these while he was in a, he was in prison, but it's thought that this imprisonment was more of a house arrest. People could come and go. And so the beginning part of the letter to the Ephesians is uh, just this foundational, wonderful doctrine. And then the latter part of the letter to the Ephesians, chapters 4 through 6, is now that you know this truth about who you are in Christ, this is how you are to live. This is how you are to walk this out. And chapter 4 really uh, starts out with uh, reminding them about being unified, about the importance of unity of the believers. And then uh, he goes into how we treat one another, um, how... uh, husbands and wives treat one another and how the um, how children and parents interact and how slaves and bond servant I'm sorry slaves and masters uh, treat one another 
And then he gets to this last part of Ephesians um, because he knows that it is going to be difficult for the believer. Jesus had said that. He said, the world is going to hate you because it hated me first and you will be persecuted. And so um, Paul often would remind that his readers that there would be suffering and it would be difficult, but um, it would be a short thing in the uh, span of eternity. And so he's given these believers at Ephesus much encouragement when he uh, tells them about this armor of God. Now, we talked about this about three days ago uh, when we talked about how important uh, it was uh, that to remember that our struggle, our uh, wrestling, our hand-to-hand combat in all of this is not against other people. It's a spiritual war. It's a spiritual battle, and it's against the rulers, against the authorities, against the world forces of this pre- or this darkness. Some uh, translations say this present darkness against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Um, but we do not have to fear that because uh, we stand in uh, God's strength and in his might, and he has graciously given us this armor of God. And so we see in verse 13, and and then I'm going to read forward to our verse for the day. It says, therefore, and so in other words, because this fight that we have is not against uh, flesh and blood, we need to take up God's armor and the full, and it's his full armor. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. And then in our verse for for the day, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And I'm going to read just past that. In addition to all having taken up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and also receive the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Oh, I just love this. And those people there would have understood what this armor, they would have been able to have a mental picture of what armor really looked like on soldiers. And the interesting thing, and we're going to park here, and I didn't realize this until um, studying it um, not long ago. I mean, I'm thinking in the last year or two that when he, uh, when Paul mentions uh, girding your loins with truth and putting on the breastplate of righteousness and shodding your feet with the preparation of the gospel of, of peace and receiving the helmet of salvation, those different pieces are mentioned in some of the Old Testament prophecies. And it is so neat because you think about God's Holy Spirit bringing to mind the word that the people would have uh, may have understood and may have known it, just like he does with us when we're doing the connections of how scripture confirms scripture and we're tying scriptures together that talk about similar things. That's what Paul was doing here. You know, God had talked about uh, different things uh, in, especially in Isaiah's prophecy, having to do some of these uh, with some of these. And we're going to look these up. And I think you will be encouraged when you see that. So remember, Paul describes this as the armor of God, and it's to fight off uh, the attacks of Satan and the things that set themselves up against God. So if we look over, just for instance, say in um, verse 14, this is before we get to our verse for the day of Ephesians chapter 6, where it says, uh, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, If we hop over to Isaiah 59, and it's talking about uh, the Lord uh, God, Yahweh, looking at what had happened to his people and how there was no justice and truth was missing and uh, things were uh, just falling apart. And we know that that's because sin of sin, he came in to be the deliverer. And also part of him, Jesus, was going to be that redeemer that would come. But listen to this and see if you can hear. I just love this. So this is in Isaiah um, 
59, 14, and I'm going to read forward to about 17. It says, Justice is turned back and righteousness stands far away, for truth has stumbled in the street and righteousness cannot in cannot enter so it is that truth is missing and he who turns aside from evil makes himself plunder then Yahweh saw and it was evil in his eyes that there was no justice and he saw that there was no man and was astonished that there was no one to intercede then his own arm brought salvation to him and his righteousness upheld him he put on righteousness like a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on his head, and he put on garments of vengeance for clothing, and he wrapped himself with zeal as a mantle. According to what they deserve, so he will pay in full wrath to his adversaries, what is deserved to his enemies. To the coastlands he will pay what they deserve, so they will fear the name of Yahweh from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun, for he will come like a rushing stream which the wind of Yahweh makes flee, a Redeemer will come to Zion. And those who turn from transgression in Jacob, declares Yahweh. And so you see that God, um, in fighting off this evil, he puts on his armor, that righteousness and that helmet of salvation for his people. And Paul is saying, we must do the same. Now that's before we get to our verse for the day, but I wanted to show you where Paul was probably uh, had been inspired to draw that from. He knew those prophecies of Isaiah and as and the Holy Spirit brings those things to mind. He brings God's word to mind. He guides us in all truth. And so when we get to this Uh, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Listen to this. In Isaiah 52, 7, he said, How lovely on the mountains are the feet of him who proclaims good news, who announces peace and proclaims good news of good things, who announces salvation and says to Zion, Your God reigns. I love that. So do you see what Paul's done? Uh, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We've talked a lot about what the gospel is. The gospel means good news. It's the good news of peace. It's the good news of wholeness. It's the good news of healing. And that comes from God. And how do we have peace with God? It's through Jesus. That's the good news of the gospel. The gospel is the good news of good things, that there is salvation and it comes through Jesus. And Paul is saying, put that on your feet. That's what needs to be uh, what you are basing your foundation on. You know, when we cover our feet with that and that takes us where we need to go. We've talked about not walking after the gods of the idols. Uh, I'm sorry, the gods of the nations because they're idols. We've talked about uh, keeping in step with the spirit. And we cover our feet that guides our step, that protects our steps with this gospel, this good news. What is the gospel? The gospel is that we are all sinners. We were, are all far away from God without Jesus. But because he loved us so, he sent his son, Jesus, to the earth to walk a sinless life. Um, and then Jesus died for us on that cross, paying the penalty that each one of us owed a holy God for our sins against him. And after he died on that cross, he was placed in the tomb. He was there for, and then on the third day, he arose. He was resurrected in full bodily form. He defeated death and hell and sin in the grave. That is the good news for us because the wages of sin are death and all of us are sinners, but Jesus died once for all. And the good news of the gospel, that good news of salvation, that we could be saved from that eternal death is that Jesus did the work for us. And so we need to have that as what we are walking in and what we are standing on that's what covers our feet that's how we prepare our feet for wherever we're going to go is that uh, no matter what comes Jesus has won Jesus is victorious and we can uh, be comforted and reassured in that and he has brought us that peace he's brought us those who were far off have been brought near I want you to hear this in Ephesians 
chapter 2 verse 13 where it says but now in Christ Jesus you who were form who formerly were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ for he himself is our peace who made both groups one and broke down the dividing wall of partition by abolishing in his flesh the enmity the law of commandments contained in ordinance so that in himself he might create the two into one new man making peace and might reconcile them both in one body to god through the cross having himself put to death the enmity jesus is our peace and that is the good news of the gospel he is that peace remember means to be made whole to be made complete uh, to be restored and that is what he does for us that's what he did for us on the cross so that's what we shod our feet with as we are fighting off um, these attacks we have uh, that shield of faith with which we can uh, extinguish all the fiery darts of the evil one we have that helmet of salvation that covers our head covers our thinking covers our thoughts because we know that it is true we put on the breastplate of righteousness that covers over our heart um, that comes from God alone we are covered uh, from God in God the Father God the Son God the Holy Spirit when we believe in him and um, and then we take up that sword of the spirit as we talk about often and friends we can't wield that sword we can't know how to use that sword if we don't spend time um, knowing it and that sword of the spirit is his word and do you notice what paul says having shod your feet so putting shoes on your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace knowing these things knowing what jesus has done for us we are prepared and that is the good news we're prepared for whatever comes because he is faithful he is victorious he has won our god is faithful our god is victorious our god keeps his covenants and i am just so thankful that he would love us so friends be encouraged by these things today um put on that full armor of God that he has given us. It's his armor. He talked about it in Isaiah when, uh, just as we mentioned, when he put on that armor to come um, stamp out evil and rescue us, and then he sent the Redeemer. He sent his son. And, oh, friends, there is no greater blessing than that for us. He has just given us everything that we need. And I'm so grateful and so thankful. Tell others about this today, friends, and be uh, encouraged in being reminded what he's done for you. Blessings to you, friends. Until next time.